Hello, Reset with Raven family. Today, I am joined by April Sanchez. April is a mindset coach, Reiki master, and inspirational speaker who, through her own healing, believes that deep within us lies our truest selves. After living through her own family traumas, loss, grief, and depression, she has made it her life's mission to be of service to others by helping them rediscover their truth, speak their truth, and shift their narratives to live their most fulfilled lives. April utilizes her Reiki energy healing to help her clients relieve emotional blocks within the body and improve their overall well-being. Welcome, April. Hello. Thank you, Raven. Thank you. And I am very excited to get started with our conversation. So April, let's talk about your journey into becoming who you are today as a mindset coach and Reiki master. What pivotal moments and resets shape you into stepping into your power? Great question. Um, yes. So I wasn't always in the mindset or in the mind frame that I am today, right? Um, so when you think about those those pivotal moments or those resets that we take, um, for me, the one that that really stands out is, um, you know, I, I, I'm originally from New York. I moved here after um, losing both of my parents and I was really lost. Um, and I was overcome by like the grief and just everything that was was within me and the emotions. And I don't really think I knew who I was, you know? Um, and so I, I, I led myself down this road that, you know, alcohol became my best friend. It became my numbing agent. And, um, you know, I got mixed in with people that were probably in the same mind frame as me, or, you know, just as lost, so to speak. And uh, I really hit rock bottom. And it got to the point where I, I couldn't believe I was where I was. So I got to the point where I um, I didn't want to live anymore. And so when I hit that moment and I, it was like a, a slap, we call it a spiritual slap in the face, almost where it's like, Hey, you know, you've, you've gotten to this point now, what? And uh, with that, I said, okay, this is, this is not the life that I wanted for myself. Um, and that kind of started that shift for me and saying, I got to do better. I got to, I got to figure this out. I've never heard that term before, a spiritual slap. Yeah. Like what, what was that? Like what did something like awaken inside of you? What, what happened? What um, really made you say like, okay, no more, or I have to, I have to change. Yeah. I think it was when I kind of came to from being hungover, drunk, in a hospital and knowing that I had, you know, made a choice um, to try to, to take my own life, you know, at the end of the day. And so when I was trying to walk home in an Arizona heat, um, I don't know, it was just something just kind of like came over me literally what, like, Hey, do you see what you just did? Like, do you see where you're at? You know what I mean? And you're at this like crossroad. And so it's like, you're going to either keep going the way you're going or you're going to change. You're going to make a shift. Um, and so I think that was, it was just like that uh, spiritual slaps. Like they're not nice normally, you know? So it's either you get really sick, you make some really hard or bad decision that puts you in a really rough place where like, you know, you were saying, you're just like, okay, wait, whoa. You know? So you're like, you're getting a piece of reality for a minute. Wow. Okay. So you're walking back home from the, I lived in Arizona, something I remember sharing with you offline and the, the heat is something else. So you're walking back home, you, you get that spiritual slap. Now what? You knew you needed to make some kind of change, transition, shift, reset in your life. Now what? What did you decide to do? Great question. Um, so I, I got home I just started crying, which is something I normally didn't allow myself to do, especially sober. 
Um, because I felt like I didn't, I felt weak if I cried. I felt like if I let myself feel those emotions that I was just going to like get lost in it. Um, but I literally just, I cried, I dropped down to my knees and I surrendered and I said, you know, I prayed and I said, listen, God, I'm sorry. Right. And I, I was saying, I, I made decisions that I shouldn't have made, but I need you now, you know? And so if, um, if you'll give me this second chance, I promise, you know, I'll make changes. And I think from that moment forward, I was kind of held accountable to that, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? To that promise. And so I was, I was put in various situations where it was like, all right, girl, so what you going to do, right? Now that's, what, that's what I'm curious to know. Yeah. What did you, cause I, it, when you say that I'm thinking about like the, I call it the deal with God, like, okay, God, <laughs> I'm sure a, a lot of us, including myself <laughs> have made the deal, like several deals with God, like, yes, hey, you get me out of this. <laughs> I promise. And it's like, I know I said it like before God, but for real this time, if you get me out of this, <laughs> Right. So, okay. So you made um, a promise to God. So what, what, what was next? So, yeah. So um, I made that promise. I had been job searching and nothing was coming up. And so within, I think that that same week um, heading into that new week, I got a call to, to start a new job. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go with this. um, But I'm going to make this more than just a single step of a paycheck. Like I'm going to try to to grow in this. And I'm going to make this part of my focus to become, to become better, to, you know, um, to reset and to give me a second shot really um, at life. And then, so the things that I kind of like were taunted with throughout that was getting phone calls at 3 a.m. at 1 a.m. from the people that I was, you know, partying with before. And they're telling me, Hey, you should come out. Right. So it's kind of like when you think about the angel on the one shoulder, right. And like, the oh, devil yeah. on the other. You know what I mean? And so um, they were like taunting me like, hey, here's an opportunity. And I'm like, sorry, can't, you know, or I just started turning off my phone before I went to bed. So that way I kind of just didn't give my power to those things. I said, no, like I was given a second chance and I really got to give it all I have. And I have to be honest to the promise that I made. That That's huge, as you say especially as soon as soon as you started talking about like the uh, what is it like the devil on one side and the angel on the other, I immediately could vision envision that because we've seen you see commercials you see things like that on tv and mm-hmm. it's like which voice will you listen to and mm-hmm. there's like a term too whatever you feed grows so whatever yeah. you pay attention to or whatever you focus on that's the one you give um, your energy too, since we're talking so much about energy. So you made the decision. I think that's another thing. And I, um, recognize this from you when I even first met you that that you give me like, I'm all in like, and it sounds Mm -hmm. like when you made that decision, you made that commitment, you were all in. So you made this commitment. Um, sounds like you started a new job, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Correct. And I remember one of the things you said, though, but even in the new job, after a while, you felt a tug for more. Yes. Yes, I did. Tell me about that. Tell me about that tug. Tell me about one of the things that I am really tapping into in this season in my life is that inner guidance, that intuition. Mm -hmm. So you got to tell us. Tell us about that inner tug. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I started this job. I stuck through it. Like you said, you know, I gave it 110 um, percent. I, I had so much growth opportunity. And here I was like at the peak, right, of my corporate career. And I was like miserable. And I'm like, something's just off. Like something doesn't feel right. I thought I was doing great. I thought this is what I wanted. But it's like, no, something's wrong. And so um, I remember saying to my husband, which he he wasn't my husband at the time, but he probably thought I was crazy. And I said to him, look, I'm not supposed to be doing this. And he's like, what are you talking about? I said, I'm not supposed to be just sitting in front of this computer, crunching numbers. Like there's something more. And he's like, well, what is it? And I said, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know, but it's something more. And so long story short, 
here I go again, conversations, right, with God. And I'm like, all right, like, what do you want me to do? And so um, on my Instagram, the next day I had like uh, three requests from life coaches. And I'm like, all right. And I happened to have a school not far from me that offered the course. And I had looked at it a couple of times and I said, all right, here I go. Like, I'm just going to go do it. Um, and then from that moment, whoa, like that, I think even caused a bigger shift and a bigger reset for my life after I started going into coaching. So you're, you have the friend requests from the life coaches. So it's like, there's that sign you, you yeah. ask God. That's why I'm always like, you know, I feel like we ask God for signs. He's like, here's a billboard. What else do you need? <laughs> so you yeah. have the friend requests from the, uh, the life coaches and you go through your own uh, coaching experience and then you become a coach. Correct. What, what moved you or what made you know, like, okay, not only did I, I want to become a coach and why specifically talk to us about mindset and like why that, that you were drawn to that and why you knew that was super important as a coach. Yes. Um, so as you were saying, in order to become a coach, I have to be coached. And so I had to be super vulnerable um, and I was asked these profound questions that I've never been asked. And I was just like, whoa. Right. And it made me bring forth these like emotions that I had suppressed for so long. And the reason I eventually led to, OK, so what's my niche? Like, what's my specialty? I chose mindset because I felt like the mindset that I had, the narratives that I wrote or that were written for me through my life had shaped how I looked at things, how I perceived things. Right. And so I had to like shift that because now mm -hmm. I said to myself, I'm giving away my power to all these voices that I hear from everybody that said anything, even society of what success looks like or what we should be instead of saying, I am unique. I am me. I'm not the world. And so what, what is important to me? What do I want out of this life? What gives me joy? It's not going to be what everybody else, you know, is getting joy from. And so I think that's why I said, let's, let's focus on the mindset because once we shift that, it changes everything. It's like, it's a reset when you think about it, but in, in your mind here. And so how you look at life and how you see things will change. And then it, it just changes your life. It changed mine. <laughs> One of the things that I think is profound about mindset is that I think of it like a fitness journey as well. Um, like mental fitness and mental yes. toughness. One thing that you said, and it stood it stuck out to me, like even after, you know, we initially met, it stuck out, stuck out to me that you said you had to learn to give yourself permission. Yes. Yes. Please yes. unpack that for me, because I, I remember I it was like a couple of days later and I started thinking about that because there had been in my life that I could relate to where I, I thought the way I was told to think, or I did things the way, you know, society or outside influences. And you said permission, you had to give mm -hmm. yourself like release. So release, I guess those chains or boundaries that have been placed on you, but un unpack that for me, for what that means to you. Yeah. So, um, I was brought up, uh, my dad was very overbearing. Um, and so I was in a, relationship that was um, with somebody for many years, I was very controlling. And so I felt like I had these, these strong restraints put on me for so long, right. And so everything I said, I, I thought I wanted to do, I would shut it down, because I'm like, well, no, you know, I can't really make money doing that. Or, well, it's not acceptable. I mean, something as silly as me getting a tattoo, right? I was like, no, 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 I can't do that. I can't. But who says I can't? Is that me telling me that I can't or is that me listening to, like you said, everybody else at all the things that all the chains that I was dragging around with me. And so I had to give myself the permission. I had to release 
myself from everybody else's expectations, everybody else's stories, everybody else's narratives and say, no, I'm giving myself permission to do in this life what I want to do, what I feel is going to bring me joy. As long as, of course, it's, you know, it's good, healthy, uplifting decisions. Right. But yeah, for me, it was just it was breaking out of that mold of what everybody thought I should be instead of what what I truly am, who I truly am, you know, beneath all of the stories and all of the junk. Is but how I, do you, I have a question. How do you arrive there? How do you get there? Because I think so many people are trying to be copycats. How, how do you walk into your purpose and, and be comfortable with you? How, how did you get there? That's a great question. Um, it was a lot of coaching, right? Me getting coached. And then it comes down to being 100% honest with yourself. So I can make excuses all day long, but is that serving me or how has that served me up until now? It's like what they say, if you do the same thing over and over again, you can't expect different results. Like it's not going to work. And so I had to say, okay, you know, let's, let's give it a shot. Start with something small, like a little thing, you know, um, and, and try it and say like, it's almost like, okay, fear is another big thing that locks us into not giving ourselves permission, not being who we want to be, not showing up in the world as we are. And so I think self-acceptance and self-love is truly where you need to start because so much, you know, so many of us reach outside for that acceptance. We look to other people to accept who we are, or we look to other people to love us but until we accept ourselves or love ourselves, then we're not being authentic. We're not we're not stepping into our power and giving ourselves permission to show up as we are. Mm, we're not being authentic and showing up as we are. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's powerful. I wanted to ask also, too, because I'm thinking about... Um, being one with self. And I'm thinking about like, kind of how, how we find and arrive at that peace of mind and authenticity. And I thought about energy and I thought about what energy we allow around us, what energy we soak in, what energy that even we give off. And for anyone who doesn't understand, um, share with us, like what, what is um, Reiki and what is the connection with energy and how does that process work or what's the study on that? Yes. Oh my God. I love it. And I love it because it did so much for me. And I was kind of like, it just showed up for me and I'm like, all right, I'm going to try it. You know? And I'm one of those people that I'm just like, eh, you know, I'll try it one time. Right. If I don't like, it, I don't like it. Um, but it moved things in me and I was just like, wow. So to answer your question, um, Reiki works with, so we have chakras in our body. Um, and these chakras are also connected energetically and in a physical sense to different um, organs and parts of our body. And so when we go through things in our life, whether it's trauma, loss, I mean, you name it, um, energetically, we hold that stuff and we don't know it. So a lot of us are like, oh, no, I've I've been over that. Like it doesn't affect me, but sometimes we don't realize that it does. And so what I love about Reiki as opposed to either other modalities for energy work is when you just surrender to like clearing the mind and you let the Reiki start to heal you, which is it's energy um, flowing through the hands and you don't have to relive the feelings of these emotions. And so what I mean by that is it's like a very subtle, like you might feel things, you might cry. I've cried, I've released, but it's just this like overwhelming sense of like awe when you're done. Like you don't feel like you don't relive the pain, right? For lack of a better phrase, but it does shift it, it moves it. And so I like to incorporate that with life coaching because it's kind of like you're doing two things. We're working here with the mindset shifting. And we're also working with the etherical body to, 
to help release that. So is it something actual like physical movement or is it more, is it closer to a meditation or is it some kind of combination of the two? Um, it, it's kind of a combination of the two. However, the only thing we would do as a Reiki practitioner is lay hands. So the most we might do is um, lay hands on your hand or maybe, you know, here on the head. Um, we won't really shift the body because some modalities will actually do that. They'll like either shake or shift. Um, unless, of course, it's something intuitively we're kind of called to do while we're, um, you know, practicing on on somebody. Yeah. Is there um, a, a focus or a mantra or anything that's taking place throughout this or? No, um, we, so as a Reiki practitioner, I, I would just, you know, prepare and call in and ask. Um, I even asked like, you know, angel guides to be, to be there. And um, I ask the client, is there something specific you'd like to put as an intention? You can mm -hmm. do that. Um, and some people, they know, like, you know, they might say, well, I have a lot of grief or I carry anger or something. And so I would say, okay, like that's a main focus, but it doesn't mean that other things can't move at the same time. Mm -hmm. One of the things you said that is interesting to me is that we think we're over things, but we're still holding on to them. Mm -hmm. And you've experienced a lot of trauma, loss, grief, and a connection that you made before when we spoke was that your pain has purpose. Yes. How talk talk about that mindset shift from sounds like what I'm hearing or what 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 stood out to me is kind of like that phrase from victim to victor or what's mm -hmm. the lesson in this? Can you unpack that for me when you talk about your pain having purpose? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think so much, so many of us are guilty of that phrase or that mindset of why me, right? Like, why did I have to go through this? Like, why am I the one struggling and suffering um, and not somebody else or, you know, what have you? And so what I had to learn was, um, it's not like a detriment. So many of us think like, you know, where we come from or things we've gone through, it's like, it makes us less than, you know, because of this, like I'm jaded, right? I'm not good enough. But the thing is we are given um, additional tools or like we learn things that make us stronger or put us ahead of somebody else. But until we can own that and say that, then we can't, utilize those new, like the new information or the things that make us, um, I'm trying to think of what I'm trying to say, like kind of puts you ahead of the pack. You know what I mean? Because you have these new, like understandings of life even, you know? So like somebody that's gone through things becomes a lot more empathetic and they become a lot more compassionate once the healing is done, obviously, but you can see and provide things and hold space for other people in a way that people that haven't gone through those things, they can't, they can't oh, empathize, you know? That's good. You know yeah. what you brought up for me? I just thought about when my last career, um, I was in an environment where my background is in healthcare and a lot of the patients and families were getting a lot of poor prognoses. It was just a lot of really um, difficult health challenges and um, a lot of people passing away, just a really high acuity um, environment. And what you just said made me think about, because I remember thinking like, I'm not supposed to be here. This is not the environment. Um, I felt an inner tug as well, like that I needed to go do something else. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm not in that environment anymore, initially I was like, oh, I'm so glad this is over. But I recognize to your point, I have a different empathy. I have a different understanding. Um, people come to me and ask me about just different healthcare questions. And but deeper than that, when people are going through something or loss or someone's dealing with someone with mental health issues I, I, or a family member that's been in the hospital for months and months, it's like I 
can relate and empathize more deeply. And it made me think about there's, I was just saying this the other day, there's no time wasted oh, and there's yeah. no experience wasted because you, I, I, I have been guilty as, as, as similar to, as you were saying of this, why me? And it's like, well, why not you? Now you can help someone else through this. And these life experiences, I like to say, they, they put some hair on your chest. They, they make, and they make you who you are. They, they make you that well-rounded um, person and individual and, and have something to really offer. And it made me think about too, like when you're interacting with your clients, I know one of the things that they probably love about you is that you have been through something. It's not like you're, you know, you know, everything's great and my life has been perfect because you can't relate to that. You can. And that's what I love about these conversations is that it's real people that have been through real stuff and they still overcame. They mm -hmm. still reset. And that's what's real. That's what's raw. And I appreciate that in you because I, I, your, your, your authenticity, it, it resonates and, and you feel it. So I, I appreciate that. So before I ask my final question, where can we find you online and how can we work with you? Absolutely. So you can find me um, through my website, which is www.intercompasslifecoaching.com. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram, um, both Inner Compass Life Coaching. Well, you'll find me there. Um, and then you can contact me with uh, any of those, any of those social media or my website. Um, and then we, I would basically do um, an introductory session, which is, you know, I talk to a person that's interested in working with me and just to make sure like we're a good fit for each other. Like you get to meet me. Do you like me? Nah, not so much. Then, you know, it kind of, it gives you that opportunity of like a getting to know you really quick. Awesome. And yeah. final question. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest lesson you've learned in your reset? <sighs> um, the biggest lesson I've learned is okay i'm trying to say how do we say this so there's like a saying i'm like a big quote and saying person but um <laughs> <laughs> what we resist will persist and so Ooh. yes and so when we when something comes up for me now where before i'd be like mm -mm, nope don't have time for that like you all you want me to feel sad no like i have things to do and they come up in our body for a reason. And so what I've learned to do is honor my feelings, honor the emotion. Um, just don't, you don't have to become it. And so that's something that, you know, you learn as well, but it's okay to feel that's normal. We're human. Um, so let it flow. But if it's coming up, there's a reason. And it's like an invitation to work at something. And so don't resist it because, when you resist and you push it aside, it's just like you're just you're just shoving more. You know what I'm saying? And so and if you overstuff something, what's going to happen eventually? It's going to like, you know, explode or, or erupt, which could be anger, which could be a nervous breakdown. Like there's so many things that can happen. And so that's been my biggest takeaway is to lean into those nudges and the invitations that are coming up. And just give yourself grace through it. I <laughs> love that. Give yourself grace and yeah. lean into it. It's like leaning into uncertainty. Lean into yeah. it and, and it'll be what it'll be and you'll rise to the occasion. And the, awesome. the reason I love lean, sorry, um, is because, you know, so many of us, like, they'll just say, we'll just jump the gun. And that's to me almost like, so you're asking me to go from here to here, like real quick. Where if it's a lean, it's like, okay, like the, it's can, it can be subtle, right? And I can just sit with it for a little while and I can lean some more. And so it's kind of letting, allowing you to just um, do it at your own pace. Like, you know, and, and the grace I think comes in that lean because it's like a shift, you know, instead of like a, oh, just jump. Cause that's, that's scary and overwhelming most of the time. So. I like that. It's basically like make it digestible. I like Yeah. That. Yeah. That's good. Dip a toe. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, thank April. You. I appreciate you. This conversation was wonderful. I could talk to you all day. Um, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. I, I'm grateful for the opportunity. Awesome. Awesome. Everyone, April really enlightened us just now. And what I love about April is that she comes from a place of vulnerability and authenticity. She reminded us that our circumstances don't define us. Listen to that inner tug for something more. As always, I have one ask. If this message blessed you, email, text, and share it with someone. My mission is to empower as many people as possible to reclaim their joy and reset their life. So we want this message to reach everyone who needs a reset. Thanks so much for being a part of the Reset with Raven family. Take care. And remember, a reset is always available to you.